Welcome back, Turn Back the Flock. I'm here with some more special guests, the D-Boys, they used to call themselves. We got Jarris Bird, TJ Ward, two NFL guys. Man, welcome to the show. Appreciate you What's having me. What's up? What's up? What's um, up? Back in y'all's day, it really wasn't that long ago. September 13th, 2008, you know, y'all go and y'all got to play Purdue. But before we even get into the game, I kind of want to talk about, you know, Y'all already y'all played Washington that year. Y'all killed them 44-10. Y'all played Utah State, kill them 66-24. Y'all going into this, this matchup, and you gotta go away. And you know, you, you know, y'all kind of got some some stuff going, some heat. So what what is the mindset going into a game like this? They're not ranked, you know. Y'all are y'all the big dogs pretty much walking around. What what's the mindset going in? TJ, you want to uh, start? I mean, first off. They weren't ranked, but they had some NFL caliber guys at key positions. So their quarterback, I believe, was Painter at the time, NFL guy. They had another receiver. He, I forgot his name, but he was, you know, at the time, he was the 6'4", 6'5", receiver that was popular. And he was that get downfield, you know, in the image of, like, Calvin Johnson type. And then they had a really good running back who I believe played in the league for a few years as well. So, you know, they were well-rounded offensively. And then them being in the Big Ten, Big Ten non-conference, you know, was a pride thing. We wanted to come in there, go over there, and show them how we play ball in the pack, how we play ball at Oregon. Mm-hmm. And, you know, non-ranked or not, we knew we had to come in and handle business. So, sure. And just piggybacking off of that, it was more, too, like, like TJ said, a pride thing, but, like, we just wanted to be physical as well. Cause in Big Ten they say, you know, Pac twelve is more finesse and stuff, speed. So we wanted to go out there and show we can play both, you know, physical and speed, finesse, whatever you want, you know, we got it. In that D B room, y'all had I mean, pro after pro after pro. Tell me a little bit, you know, Walt Thurman, y'all yourselves, Pat Chung. Tell me about the competition in that room, kind of what what was that dynamic like? That, that, that room was special. I mean, we – the biggest thing I say, the word I would say is accountability. We had accountability in that room, and guys, we had a high level of standard for ourselves, and, and, and if we drop below it, you know, guys weren't having it. And we just wanted to outwork everybody and just be the best. So, um, yeah, our drive to be the best was, was huge, and we held each other accountable. And also, too, you know, we cared about each other. So a lot of times, you know, you have, you know, secondary guys compete – and, and, you know, we want, want the best for each other, but also to, you know, individually, you know, everyone wanted to, you know, excel and do great things. But, you know, it was just a real team camaraderie and people throw around that, you know, brotherhood thing a lot. But, you know, it really meant something to us in that room. And, you know, Coach Neal did a great job of instilling that in us and just working hard and, and um, just trying to build like a legacy, something to be remembered. Yeah, I I describe it as healthy competition. Like okay. I've never been in such a competitive room, but there wasn't like it didn't. I don't know. It, was weird. it didn't feel like we were competing against each other, but right. it was very very competitive, and we cared that we wanted to see each other be as successful as possible because we knew it make the whole group go. And you know, I think another thing that goes into that is us being kind of all underrated or we felt we were yeah. underrated right yeah. even me being a walk on Berg being what two star mm-hmm. walt being low star pat being you know low star but we all knew like we were better than our ratings right yeah. so that just fueled us and we seen that in each other it's like okay he feeling the same way i'm feeling about our position so let's just go out here and kill yeah I agree. One hundred percent. Y'all get me excited. One hundred percent. Um. So, you know, the game happens. They kick off. First half is not, not really ideal. It's just things ain't really going too well. Uh, luckily, right before halftime, somebody gets a pick. Uh, Jarris actually. So just kind of take me, take me through that play because I couldn't really tell. I'm watching the game and I couldn't really tell. Like, were were y'all in some type of two? I couldn't. Was it a broken play? Take me into that if you can. Uh, to be completely honest, I'd have to go back and rewatch it. Uh, I do remember the pick. Um, I don't we were know. Rolling. I think we were rolling coverage that game. Were we rolling coverage? Okay. Yeah, I think we were rolling. 
and I, I just remember he threw a ball and I, I was fortunate enough to get my hands on it. Um, I think we needed it. You know, they were going to drive, potentially scoring before the half. So um, I was excited just to be able to get my hands on the ball. Anytime we can get turnovers, that's something we stress, especially as a DB. You know, turnovers are huge, getting your hands on the ball. Um, so it was just a big play at a big moment when we needed it. So I was thankful for that. TJ, do you kind of remember like going in, like in halftime, anything being said? Like y'all are down, you're on the road. You know, y'all are the ranked team. Y'all probably, you know, didn't come out as, as hot as y'all thought y'all would. Were there any halftime thoughts that it was like, hey, we we need to we we need to pick it up? Anything you said, anything any coaches said? Man, I just remember it being way more hot and humid than we any of us expected. Yes. I like we that. were sweating through our yeah. jerseys. Like if you see that my jersey is big as hell because it's probably the back of the jersey. <laughs> like it's big. Like my jersey looks like a dress that came in. <laughs> and I'm like, yo, it was like the humidity was killing us. And we were not expecting that at all. So we were probably in halftime just trying to hydrate and get right. But like you said, knowing we needed some turnovers and the game was going to come down to a stop on our end. I know Coach Neal was in there like, it's going to come up to us. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That <laughs> it's going exactly. to be on us. You're going to have to make a stop. They're yeah. not going to win the game for you. You're going <laughs> yeah. to have to make a stop. That, that's how it went. You know? yep. That's it. So yeah. I guarantee that's what we were doing. And um, I remember the second – it was it was a tough game, man. It was a tough game. And it, was, it, it showed our grit on the road. And we found something out about ourselves that game as a team. Because being on the road, hostile environment, it was loud. Purdue, they had a lot of fans. It was right on campus. Like, yeah. the stadium is literally in between housing, yeah. dorms or something. So, um, it, national it was, it was audience. an experience. Yeah, it was yeah. an experience. Like, going over there in the older stadium. Like, everything on the West Coast is fairly newer. You know, they got a lot of history and stuff in the Midwest and the Big Ten. So, that was cool. But and yeah, a lot of content it was but like like you're saying too, a lot of things too, like playing out there, like a lot of a lot of people didn't get to see us play because the time mm -hmm. we played was later, you know what I'm saying? So that was a time for us to get the national audience to go out there and show what we could do, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, that's right. Because everyone would watch them. So it was all that all that you're saying, plus you know, having the audience being able to see what we could do. So y'all both had somewhat longer jerseys, and I, I meant to ask y'all this early, <laughs> but what did y'all have a certain swag that y'all wanted to wear for the games? Any certain accessories? I mean, I, like I said, I saw the, the long jersey. Yeah, I'm not going to make any comments about that. That was how it was. <laughs> no, man, that's of, not how it was, man. Yeah. Any, uh, any superstitious things you had to wear? Anything like that? I, I didn't. Used to, yeah, I used to like, depending on the game, I used to try to tuck my jersey up, like, in the 90s. I've done that, like, in my whole career pretty much. But... Like you said, man, they didn't always have my jersey tailored the way it's supposed to be. So sometimes I got the untailored ones that was super long. Yeah. And that, that game was one of those jerseys. It was a few throughout my career. It's like, damn, y'all didn't get to tailor it? Oh, yeah. man. Oh, man. You got to wear this bag. <laughs> yeah. Oh, man. Now I got to wear this big baggy jersey this game. But yeah. I will say, if we had to take a poll of like who had the most swag out of the secondary, I was definitely at the at the bottom because I I had no <laughs> swag. I would be going out there and guys would be like, "Bird, what do you have on?" I'd be throwing on hey. armband. Just but look, yeah. sometimes less is more though because simple mm -hmm. stuff looking clean, right? Bird would be yeah. looking clean yeah. some games without trying, <laughs> and then sometimes you got the triers, you know, be like, yeah. Come on, bro. Like, stop every giving rich man. All, stop yeah. giving us all this stuff for these guys to put on. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Dude got a wristband on his ankle, <laughs> uh, got around his neck. It's crazy. Perfect. So uh, into the second half a little bit. TJ, you go ahead, decide to make a play or kind of early in the third quarter. You um you get a pick. Do you remember anything about that before I say what I what I saw? Do you remember anything about yeah, that? Yeah, I, I do remember that. I thought it was in the first half, but I guess not. Um, I remember that coach saying that they was going to try us deep, that he was going to give me an opportunity to make a play in the post, and I would just have to make it. And um, that year, I was really focused on making plays on the back end because, you know, coming from corner now at free, 
I felt like I had a lot of plays to make up to catch up to these three, right? Bird, Walt, and Pat been making plays for three, four years. So, you know, I, I had a lot of work to do. And um, when that ball went up, it was floating for so long. I'm like, <laughs> man, like, where is the receiver? Because I just – I was reading the quarterback the whole time. Like, I didn't even look at none, none of the receivers. So, I'm I'm literally tracking the ball, and he's throwing it to do 6'7". So, I'm like, do I have enough bounce to go up with this dude, period, right? Or so I should just go down – go up for the knockdown. And I'm like, nah. So, as I'm running, I could feel Bird running with him. And – they kind of passed me, so I kind of knew it was underthrown, and I and I had the opportunity to go up and, and go get it myself. So, um, yeah, big play. I came down with it, looked and ret- return it, and Bird. I thought he was gonna block. He crossed me. I thought he was gonna block. He didn't block. He tackled me. So, <laughs> yeah, I got it. We be got to the sideline. I yeah. was like, hey, man. <laughs> and we practice that a lot too, so I should have been better at that for sure. You know, you got to block for your bro. Oh yeah, but yeah, that was uh that was my first pick that year because I had one against Washington, but it got called back. Oh yeah, okay. That, that's the that's the worst feeling. That is man, man by some it was Pat too. Pat was pi and he had two <laughs> pis that season. Called back two of my picks that year, bro. I was so upset. Um. LeGarrett, LeGarrett has a big second half as well, but since y'all are here, someone, another, I mean, Jarrett, you really, you really had a game. I mean, four tackles, one I, one INT, two PBUs, but take me into this, this point return, because I mean, I feel like that was a big shift in the game along with TJ's pick. So it kind of take me into that. Well, point return, I, I mean, it was just, I think we, it was a, a crucial part of the game and we needed a spark. Um, and I just remember Coach Rad just saying, teaching us, you know, catching the punch, just get up field. And so it was a punt they kicked. I think they, they kicked it pretty far, so I had a room to kind of read everything. He, he booted it. <laughs> yeah, and so <clears throat> I caught it, and I just went straight up field and just started kind of just weaving and went to the sideline and started running. And like I said before we got on air, I was just like, you could see my my back, how, how the humidity, everything, that whole – it was like everything was on my back, tilted back, everything, but – you know, I made it, and then I just remember diving in the end zone because I felt somebody breathing on me. So uh, <laughs> it was it was a, it was a cool moment, you know what I mean, just to be able to do that and uh, just share it with you know all my teammates and my brothers. So especially for like the DB room to you know to have a moment like that and put points on the board. So yeah, no doubt. I guess lastly, you know, y'all keep going through the game back and forth, and then y'all get to overtime because the kicker misses it late in the fourth. TJ, you have a, a big tackle on, on third down. We, you know, you say we should have had a, a pick six, but, you know, it, we'll still count this third down tackle as a big play. Uh, <laughs> take me into, you know, when y'all when he misses that that second field goal in overtime and then, you know, LeGarrette goes and wins it. What's y'all's feeling after such a hard fall game? Like you said, it was hot. I mean, y'all started off kind of shaky, kind of worked your way back into it, went into overtime and still won. Kind of just take me into the locker room and y'all starts as a secondary after this game. Man, we were ready to go home. Like, get us up out of here, please, ASAP. Yeah. Yeah. Like, get the fans going, just get the buses going. It's time to go. But like I said earlier, it it we found something out about ourselves and it gave us confidence going forward. Like, we really got something special. We got some dogs on this team. And back against the wall, I know who fighting, you know, and that's everybody. Like, yeah. it wasn't nobody I looked at that I say wasn't fighting, wasn't going to get down with us. So um, yeah. that's that's mainly how, how I was feeling. And I I know in Bird speaks to that. Yeah. Like him and Walt being special teams returners and doing all that, you know, continue to make plays and represent the DB room, you know, that's huge too because, you know, and you can't always get points on offense. You already know. Yeah. And to say them is like defensive points. Them ain't special teams points. <laughs> Bird, <laughs> say Bird and Walt scored them. And Pat, so yeah, yeah, we definitely took pride in that. But it was just, I think we were exhausted. You know, like I said, it was a long game. We all put in work, so we were excited to just get back and, and you know come away with the win in a big, you know, hostile environment. So yeah, uh, no doubt, man. Well, hey, I appreciate y'all's time. Two Oregon legends, ladies and gentlemen. Turn back the flock. Thank you.